Hello fellow explorers, we are Martin, Sharon and Taylor, better known as Sailing Trinity, an Irish Aussie family who dare to escape the ordinary. We abandoned jobs, university and the mundane, selling everything we own to chase a life of freedom aboard Trinity, our Genoa Sun Odyssey 50DS. Welcome to the finale of both our five-part cleaning, organization and fixing series, as well as the end of our entire winter chapter. Readying our ourselves with some final fixes and finishing touches before we jump into our epic season 2 Greek odyssey around the islands in 80 days. Join us this episode as we put the cherry on top, finishing our last few little winter jobs on our girl. Don't miss the chance to support us by liking and subscribing. Your encouragement keeps the channel and crew going strong. And feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. We cherish connecting with y'all. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. So just out today grabbing a few parts and uh, a few chemicals from the local chandelier here at Cleopatra. Again, you know, you're taking off scuff marks, cleaning up the canvas, waterproofing. We don't have any of the chemicals, so it's the first time to do it. So we're just dropping by the chandelier and we'll have a look around, see what we can get. A few moments later. And we can't. It's only open Monday to Friday. Oh, <laughs> I'm just about to put on some waterproof spray onto our flags. Ta-da! Irish one and the Aussie one. Yourself in this one. Are you? Am I gonna hang it up? She's flying away. Bad luck for the captain not to wreck the flag on the boat, you know. Maybe that's what happened last time. Did you put it in last time? No, I don't think so. Ah, uh, I got a fact check. Anyway, here. We've well, yeah. <laughs> opted for a metal pole as well because it's less likely to snap when it comes into contact with other boats. There she goes. Evening wind has begun. Oh, you're in my shot. Oh my god. You just can't be cinematic these days. Nice. I don't know what to do with these. I feel like frame them or something. It will be cut though, and then. Give away. Give away. Have our chat real flag. We'll sign them. Here, I'll take sign. Ireland off your hands there. Yeah. Sign your dippy doors. Oh. Nice. <laughs> sign them and give away. Oh, Alright, let's take these inside so they don't blow away and strangle some poor fish. Hey. Yeah. Speaking of cinema, <laughs> the new ones have arrived. Oh, it's happening. Getting deja vu from when we did this in Marina Direcchi. You probably had the same shirt on as well. <laughs> Perfect opportunity to test out the day bird. I do say so myself. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> little headrest now. Great, I love it. I just can't see. It's a hard knock life. This is my angle of choice. It's called comfy. Oh, more scraps. Right, I'll come closer to you. Well, first of all, let me just start by saying, right? 
Why are we even putting flags up the front of the boat? Flying courtesy flags on maritime vessels is a tradition deeply rooted in maritime history, dating back centuries. The earliest recorded use of courtesy flags can be traced to maritime practices in the Mediterranean region during the Middle Ages. These flags, raised upon entering foreign waters, symbolize respect for international customs and the sovereignty of the host nation. The practice originated from the need for ships to visually signal their peaceful intentions and willingness to abide by local laws and customs. Failure to fly the appropriate courtesy flag can result in financial penalties or diplomatic complications depending on the severity. Alongside courtesy flags, vessels also can display separate country flags. These usually represent the nationality of the crew. Overall, the tradition of flying both courtesy and country flags underscores the importance of diplomacy, mutual respect, and adherence to international protocols, including Global Maritime Navigation. Yeah, there's lots of different knots for, for actually tying these and techniques. We're just going to take the, the new age, modern way of doing it, which is using cable ties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very profound. We're just going to mount them to the guidelines. I think they're called guy lines. If I am incorrect, if anybody knows what they're really called, let me know in the comments. I really am not a fan of the bows. I love bows. I really have for most of my life, but not in this circumstance. They don't look very threatening <laughs> for our pirate ship. The size of that, that's very big. That's extremely courteous. It's a very courteous courtesy flag. I think that's too courteous. What do we think? It's looking a bit big, isn't it? It's is looking at quite we're large. We'll fly it anyway. We're not going to put it up because it's way too big. So we'll go and grab one in the morning before we leave. Golden sword. Well, but our home is. This is what remains of Sailing Trinity Season 1. Lol. And these are the beginning of Sailing Trinity Season 2. <laughs> on the outboard engine and also installed the little crane that the hoist we have off the transom. Nice. That dirty thing that was in the sail locker. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> that dirty thing that off? was in the sail locker is going to be very heavy. Because the motor weighs 30 kilos, which is a lot to really Yeah. Oh, I remember every, like the stress. <laughs> like if that goes in the drink, it's staying in there. No shipping that off to Athens to get things. <laughs> Tell me, have a look at that. Yeah. You coming with me? Yeah. We go home. <gasps> oh, look at this fancy thing. Let me flip that camera. Yep. Hello. Do you want to talk us through? Well, quickly, we just put the harness around it and a couple of key, big straps around and a couple of side straps. And these side straps can run underneath as well. But yeah, it seems to be in place. Lovely. And this is a two to one lock and tackle pulley system. Should really help. Well, it remains to be seen. Uh, we're going to take the motor out tomorrow on the dinghy and give it a bit of a test after being sitting up all winter. Let's hope we can get it started. There's a good chance we won't. But... No, don't say that. guys from the waypoint came back today to do our rigging because uh, this is something we couldn't have done when we were over on the hard you have to actually have it done down in, in the water this is a gooseneck neat starting with making trinity safer again setting off on our voyage season two it's good to see what they what they do so we can kind of get to do it ourselves so they're called backstays what they're doing there Let's just see they go all the way up to the very top. Looks like they just used some spanners and you had to like a twisting motion. 
one's holding it tight while the other one's turning it in the center. The guy's over here and he's checking everything there. Right, so just popping outside to have a look, take you through what we did with all of the rig repairs and the rig tuning today. As you've probably seen in, in other videos before, we had a lot of problems with our goose neck and squeaky boom bang. We used to have to tie the, the boom off to stop it squeaking in, at night with a few different issues. We've had to replace this piece here, both of these pieces. This is called the goose neck, it's where the, the boom connects to the mast, so we should have a much smoother operation now of the boom. We also had down here, we had that pin down there at the end of, of this big arm, it's called the boom bank. It needed a big a big washer put on, so we've had that replaced as well. There's one final thing that we had done with regards to the running rig, part of our furling line that opens up our head sail. We had one of the rollers replaced. And of course the big, big job that we had done, we had all of our standing rigging retune so the lines the aluminium the stainless steel wires that hold up the rig the mast that was all very very loose so anyway that was it yeah hopefully she's set up now to get us sailing a bit better when we head out into the gulf okay see you later guys Just a little bit of an update again. I was preparing the engine, just giving you a bit of a service, having a look through it before we set off. And I looked through the pre-filter, I got a bit of a surprise actually. We're a diesel engine, most boats are diesel engines. And diesel engines have a phenomenon called diesel bug, which is an actual organic biological critter that lives in diesel tanks. If it builds up, it can clog your pumps and your filters and everything. It's not very good for the engine overall, as you can imagine. Now, but when I had a look in my filter, sure enough, see that, I'll give you a close-up in a second, but that organic matter is in fact diesel bug. Now, luckily enough, I went to the Chandra's and they have a product called the Rotomar 82, which dissolves and kills the bugs. So this says 25 milliliters in this little measurement yeah, so thing. So four of them is 100 milliliters into the tank, yeah? And then half fill the tank with water. You have to take the lid off for the air to get out. Do it over the water and just fill it. wipe of cloth there sir. Mm -hmm. So this is a sanitary uh, treatment for the black water tank. There's a lot of bacteria in bugs in there so this is eat the bugs. Hopefully it does eat the bugs down there. If you can see much nothing exciting. <laughs> so what are you doing now popping water in there? Yeah. our final day morning hour half an hour even <laughs> you heard it here first after six months in marina preveza we are finally down to our last 30 minutes just enough time to leave y'all on a cliffhanger tune in next episode as we finally set off on our highly anticipated season two around the islands in 80 days with us three trinity and the sea taking you guys on an epic journey for the entirety of the 2024 sailing season are you ready we can't wait to escape the ordinary with you see you there guys